Okay, so in this tutorial we'll be having a look at how to get um, the launchpad buttons to light up when we press them in user mode. So we've got them set up in Ableton from the last tutorial and we're in user mode which is basically um, uh, letting the, con the launchpad act like a piano. So all of these are like different piano notes and if I hold one down it's like holding a piano key down and if I release it it's like releasing the key. So the way um, we get the buttons to light up is say this button, let's just call it X. Um, it's a bit more complicated than this, but I'll explain it better in the, in the next tutorial. When I press X, the launchpad will send a message called a MIDI message to Ableton. And to get the button to light up again, it's just for Ableton to send it back to this launchpad. So we've got a few things here. So we've got two launchpads. So how can we differentiate um, these two and say, okay, Ableton, send this X back to this launchpad and this X back to, back to this launchpad or whatever. So let's have a look here. Um, we're in session mode at the moment, so if you're not in this mode, if you're in arrangement mode, just hit tab to get there. And we've got an audio track at the moment and we don't want that. So right click here to the side and just do insert MIDI track or control shift T if you're on Windows. And you can see here, we've got a volume meter for the audio track. And similarly, we've got a MIDI, tra MIDI meter um, for the MIDI tracks. But if I press um, the MIDI, you can see nothing's happened, but the launch pads are set up correctly. So basically we can get rid of this. And what we want is for the MIDI tracks to receive incoming MIDI messages. So what we want to do is go here and there's this IO button, which is input outputs, or you can do control alt I if you're on Windows. And here we'll get this section here, which basically says what controllers um, the tracks should receive from and where they should send the MIDI to. So there are two ways to um, get MIDI. I don't recommend this way, which is basically setting the monitor to in, and now you can see the, the track is getting MIDI messages. So I'd keep that to auto. And what I do is I just arm it with this button, and you can see the clips here change, so you can like record MIDI also, which is useful. Um, so here are the notes coming in, so you can see different notes being played. Uh, so that can be useful. Um, but that's not what I want to show you. So this is just a, a quick way, one button to turn on a track. Uh, however, you can see a couple of problems. So if you've got one launch pad, you don't really need to do this. But if you've got a launch pad and another launch pad or any other controller, you want to say, okay, I want this track um, to send it to the left launch pad. Um, you can also rename just by right clicking here or doing control R. And this one to right launch pad. So what I want to do is left launchpad to receive from the left launchpad only and send it back to the left launchpad and then this track right launchpad will only receive from the right one and send it back to the right one. But the problem is um, we've got this armed and you can see if I press the left one it receives messages but it also receives messages um, from, from the right one. So what I want to do is MIDI from means where it's going to receive messages from, pretty straightforward. So just select launchpad pro number one, which is this one. And you'll see it only receives messages from here, but not from here. So that's great. That's what we want. And then to get it to light up again, just send the MIDI back to the same launchpad. So MIDI two, send it back to launchpad number one. And you need to select the right channel. So it only works on channel number three and six, but don't use six because it's glitchy. So just use number three and boom, we've got lights. So how do we do it for multiple um, launch pads? So you can see this arm thing, if you uh, try to click this one, it will turn off automatically. Um, so there are two ways around this. Um, you can either hit control when you want to activate multiple ones, or you can go into options, preferences, and here go to the um, record warp launch tab and just uh, disable exclusive arm, which basically means if you've got it enabled, it means you can only arm one track at a time like this. Um, I'm holding control just to demonstrate it, but you can just do this when you disable it and then you've got both of them activated. So then we can set this one up too. And you can see this one again has the same problem. It receives messages from the right launch pad, but also the left one. So what we want to do, you, you're supposed to look here by the way, so right one and left one. So go again from uh, to the MIDI from tab and select launch pad number two. And now we've got this one is responding to this, you can see here. And this one, this left one is responding here. So we've separated them correctly. All we need to do is for this right launchpad um, track to send back out to launchpad number two again, because obviously we've selected number two on the input, which is this, so we want the same output. So launchpad two here, and then same thing, just select channel three, and we've got the lights working. 
So I'll explain more about these messages, MIDI messages, in the next tutorial because there are a few uh, properties um, uh, that the Launchpad sends which are important for light shows. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial and if you have any questions, um, just write a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Cheers!